Okay, so first of all, I'm going to format all of these numbers. So I'll select them all and change the number formatting to number with two decimal places. I'll then put the numbers in the center of the cells. The next thing I want to do is make all of these cells into squares. So I'll select all of the columns and decrease their size until they are 100 pixels. Then I'll select all of the rows and increase their size till they're 100 pixels. And now all of these cells are squares. I'll now fix the headings. So I'll increase this and then rotate the text upwards and put it in the center. Then I'll take these headings and make them right aligned and put them in the center. Okay, now the next thing I'll do is add color to this table. So I'll select all the numbers and go to conditional formatting and color scales and select the first one. Then I'm going to edit this conditional formatting. So go back to conditional formatting and manage rules and edit rule. And I have only positive correlations, so my numbers can only be between 0 and 1. So I'll change the minimum number to 0 and the midpoint number to 0 0.5 and the maximum number to 1 and OK and apply and OK again. And now I have color in my table showing me how good the correlations are. So green is good correlations and then the bad correlations are in red. The next thing I want to do is change all of these squares into circles. And I'll do this by putting shapes in here. So I'll go insert and illustrations and shapes and select the rectangle then click and drag this to go over the top of the first cell. Then go to shape format and align and snap to grid. And this will allow me to perfectly line up the shape with the grid lines underneath. I'll just adjust each of these sides so I know they're lined up. Then I will insert a circle and I'll click and drag in the top corner to make the circle the same size as the square underneath. Then I will select one of these shapes, then press Control A for select all to select both of these shapes. Then right click and copy and copy those two shapes into a blank PowerPoint presentation. Now select both of the shapes and go to shape format and merge shapes and combine. And this causes the circle to cut out the middle of the square. So we end up with this shape here. Now merge shapes is only available in Office 2016. If you have Office 2013, you can right click on the quick access toolbar and select customize quick access toolbar. Then go to commands not in the ribbon and scroll down until you find combine shapes then add that to the quick access toolbar and OK. And then you should have this option up here to combine shapes, which you can use instead of merge shapes. Now I have my shape here. I'm going to copy this and paste it back into Excel. Then I'll delete these two shapes here because I no longer need them and move this shape over the top of the first cell. And I still have snap to grid switched on, so this will line up perfectly. I'll now format this shape, go to shape format and change the shape outline to black and also decrease the weight of this shape to make it thinner. Then go to shape fill and change it to white. And now I have changed the square to make it look like a circle. 
I'm now going to do this for the rest of the cells in the table. So select the first shape and press Ctrl D to duplicate it. Then move it into the next cell. And so long as you keep the shape selected, the next time you press Ctrl D, it will make a copy of that shape and move it the same amount to the side. So I can keep pressing Ctrl D to fill in the rest of the row. Then once you've filled in the whole of the row, press Ctrl A to select all of the shapes and then press Ctrl D to duplicate them. I'm then going to click and drag these so they line up with the next row and then keep pressing Ctrl D until I filled up the rest of the rows in the table. Okay, and now I have changed all of the squares into circles. This is the official ending of this video. I'm just going to spend another couple of minutes formatting this table. So I can select everything and add borders to it. And then I have a table with borders. I can also remove all of the borders by going to no border and then selecting one of the shapes and pressing Control A to select all the shapes going to shape format and changing the shape outline to white. Then clicking in the top corner over here and that selects the whole of the sheet and changing the fill to a white fill to hide the rest of the grid lines. And now I have a table with no borders. Now Going diagonally down the middle of the table, I have this line of ones, and these aren't real correlations because they are just the same compound correlated with itself. So I can hide these using another layer of conditional formatting. So select the table and go to conditional formatting and new rule. And then format only cells that contain cell values equal to one and for the formatting I'll change the font color to white and also the fill to white and okay and okay again and now the ones going down the middle of the table have disappeared. Now also the bottom triangle of this table is a mirror image of the top triangle of this table. And as they are both showing the same information, I only really need one half of this table. So I'm going to hide the top triangle using another shape. Go to Insert and Illustrations and Shapes and select this right angled triangle. Then click and drag to draw the triangle over the table and rotate it round to hide the top triangle. Then change the shape outline to white and the shape fill to white. I'll then also drag the headings down here and move this back up here. And for the headings, I will make them aligned to the top. And now I have just the table as a triangle. Now, if you wanted to have just the colors in here representing how good the correlation is and not the numbers, you can select everything and change the number formatting to a custom number format. And this will be three semicolons. And putting three semicolons in here with nothing in between will make nothing show up in the cells. And OK. And now you can see all the numbers have disappeared. Now you can also select the whole of the table and copy it and then paste it as a picture. And now I have a picture of this table which I can resize and I can do anything to it that you would do with a normal picture. So I can copy this into a Word document or a PowerPoint presentation or something like that. Okay, so in this video I have shown you how to make a correlation matrix in Excel using conditional formatting and that is everything.